Zealand if a law or a decision made by a government actor or a public facing person is against the Bill of Rights Act. It doesn't necessarily mean that that decision is illegal. Hey what's up it's Julie, I'm a lawyer and a former top law student and lecturer in communication studies and today we're going to be looking at the New Zealand Bill of Rights Act 1990. So the Bill of Rights Act has become a little bit more popular I would say after Covid because a lot of people in relation to the lockdowns or in relation to the vaccine mandates have said hold on what about our human rights or what about the New Zealand Bill of Rights, what does this do, how does this relate to it? So, I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the Bill of Rights and then we can talk about it in relation to COVID specific issues at the end. The Bill of Rights is a statute, which means the government created this law and it came out in 1990 and it contains a whole bunch of fundamental rights that all New Zealand citizens should be afforded. So there's, for example, the right to freedom of movement, the right to freedom of expression, the right to not be tortured, the right to not be killed, the right to refuse medical treatment. So there are a whole bunch of fundamental human rights that are held in this act. In relation to who this act applies to, meaning who you can sue under the Bill of Rights, if you look at section 3 of the act, it says the legislative, executive or judicial branches of the government. So that means government actors like politicians can be held accountable under the Bill of Rights Act or any person who's performing a public function. So for example, maybe if you're operating a local sports club, it might be considered a public type of role that you're having, it's not quite private. So basically you can hold government actors like local body councils or anyone in the government accountable or people who are acting in a public type way. So that means you can't hold accountable your landlord under the Bill of Rights Act, you can't hold your employer liable under the Bill of Rights Act, these are all private entities. So yeah, we're thinking government, we're thinking public. In relation to how the Bill of Rights Act works, it's a little bit of a weak act, a lot of people would say, because it doesn't override any other statute or law that exists in New Zealand. So if you compare this to the American Constitution, any law that is unconstitutional, you can take to court and try to get rid of that law and say, it's against the Constitution, it should go. So that's called judicially reviewing that law. America has a very strong system of judicial review. But in New Zealand, if a law or a decision made by a government actor or a public facing person is against the Bill of Rights Act, it doesn't necessarily mean that that decision is illegal. So there's a test in the Bill of Rights Act which states how the Bill of Rights Act relates to other laws. And the test is a little bit tricky, so bear with me here. First section 4 says no law in the New Zealand system is illegal purely because it is in contradiction with the Bill of Rights Act. Section 5 of the Act says that the rights in the Bill of Rights Act can be limited, but only in a way that is demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. So what that means is, um, for example, in the New Health case, it means that Yes, technically in this case, the council in South Taranaki were fluorinating the water and technically this was against section 14 of the Bill of Rights Act, which is the right to refuse medical treatment, because the court held that fluoridating the water was actually medically treating the people. However, the court later went on to say that although this is true, that it is a breach of this Bill of Rights Act. This is a breach that we can tolerate in our free and democratic society. So it was held to not be a breach of the Bill of Rights Act. However, if you look at the Yardley case, which my old law firm won that case. So that case is about police officers and members of the New Zealand Defence Force and the mandate for COVID-19 vaccines on those workers. And the court held that in this situation, the vaccine mandate was infringing on some of the rights affirmed in the Bill of Rights Act and it was considered to not be demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. And that is mainly because the way that the law was structured was that it was about continuity of the workforce. So they didn't want a whole bunch of police officers or defense, office or defense members to be coming down with COVID and unable to work. However, that was not considered to be a good enough reason to take away people's human rights in that type of way. And it was also found that there was no evidence that being vaccinated or unvaccinated would lead to you not catching COVID. Because as we know in our society now, everyone is catching it. So that was an example of 
a right that was breached in the Bill of Rights Act that was not demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. This video is sponsored by my brand new course which is for students who are just about to go into their first year of law school and it gives them an overview of the entire legal system and different things that they're going to be studying throughout their degree. So it's to get ahead before you've even started your law degree because as we all know studying law can be extremely stressful and difficult and there are so many new concepts and ways of thinking so my course will give you an overview of everything that you'll be covering in your first second year and it will also teach you about making notes reading cases and all sorts of different stuff so if you're interested in taking this course please check out the description below it has a link to my website where you can sign up for the course Section six of the bill of rights act states that if a different law in our system can be interpreted in a way that is consistent with the Bill of Rights Act, then it should be interpreted in that way. So for example, if there is a provision or a section in an act which is quite vague, it should be interpreted by the courts as being the most rights friendly that it can be. So what happens when a government actor is found to be breaching the Bill of Rights? Basically, if there's a law or an act that is found to be breaching the Bill of Rights, all that can be done is the courts can say, hey, the Bill of Rights is being breached and it's not demonstrably justified and we don't agree with this and that's it. So it's called a declaration of inconsistency and this is because in New Zealand Parliament is always supreme. So Parliament is the number one lawmaker and the courts are considered to be secondary so the courts can't override the law that Parliament has made and say we're going to take down your law because it's inconsistent with the Bill of Rights. So you can do that in America if it's unconstitutional, you can take down the law, but the courts in New Zealand can't do that. However, if the law is what you call secondary legislation, which means that there's an original act somewhere which says, which comes from parliament and says lower people down in the government system can create a law. So for example, a local council bylaw or something like that, then that can be struck down if it is inconsistent with the Bill of Rights Act. So that's what happened in the Yardley case. There was an order which was created by the Minister of Health. So there was an act saying that, hey, if there's ever a pandemic or something like that, the Minister of Health can create these orders and then the Minister of Health created all these orders. So it was able to be struck down, which means the law no longer existed after they lost the court case because it was inconsistent with the Bill of Rights in a way that was not demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. In regards to figuring out whether something is demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society, there is an entire test that you must, that the courts go through, and I'll go through that in a different video. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video on the Bill of Rights Act, and if you liked this video, please give me a like or subscribe to my channel, and see you next time. Bye!